In problems when you're going to be factoring by difference of two squares, the key things are you have to have a difference, so it must be subtracting, must be two terms for the two squares, and each of those must be a square number. In that case, you get a plus b and a minus b. So some problems can become more complex as the powers get larger. In the example where we have x to the fourth minus 81z to the fourth, we must first treat this at any other factoring problem, where the very first step is to look for the greatest common factor. In this particular example, there isn't one because you have x to the fourth but z to the fourth. But do recall that that should always be your first step. Once we've realized that, we notice that there are two terms, that's important, and you are subtracting them. So that's a hint to you that you should be thinking about the difference of two squares uh, pattern. So what we have to think about is what squared gives us x to the fourth and what squared gives us 81z to the fourth. And so if we think about that harder, we know that x squared, when you square that, that equals x to the fourth. Also, 9z squared, when you square that, since if you're squaring a product inside the parentheses, you have to square both parts. So that is going to be equal to 81z to the fourth. Thus, we can factor this using the difference of two squares method, where you're going to have the same first term in both of your parentheses, the same second term, but just going to be opposite. So we have x squared first in both parentheses. You have a positive and you have a negative. And then you have 9z squared in both of the, the second terms of each of our binomials. Well, from here, we take a look and verify that we are, in fact, finished. If you have x squared plus 9z squared, that cannot be factored anymore because of that plus sign. There is no such thing as the sum of two squares factoring, only the difference. But that leads us to our second factor, where we have x squared and 9z squared. You have a difference again. So always, when you're factoring, you must verify that you have factored completely by double checking if there's anything more to be done. And in fact, there is more to be done in this second, second factor, factor because, we, because know we know that x squared, x squared is going to, is equal, going to equal x squared. X squared. And that's important to remember that that x is inside those parentheses. And we also know that 3z, when you square that quantity, that's going to equal 9z squared. So what it looks like then is that this underlined factor here is another difference of squares problem. So you have to factor completely by continuing to factor. The first factor, x squared plus 9z squared, just stays as is. And then the second one can be factored further into another difference of squares problem, where you have the same first term but opposite second. So based upon this work over here, what we notice is that you can put an x in the first parts of each of those remaining factors and a 3z in the second part of those remaining factors. Now we have actually factored completely. So this is a pretty complex problem in that there's two sets of difference of two squares factoring within it. But when you focus on the fact that you have two terms and a difference between them, and then you think harder about whether those are squares, that will help you factor completely to the end of the problem.